construction technology. Well, uh, regarding my topic, I will just introduce a little bit here. The, as we know, the people are migrating from the rural areas to the urban areas in search of the jobs. Of course, these days, uh, it may be the other way around for some time temporarily, in the sense they are going back. But otherwise, general, they are migrating to this. And hence, the planning of the cities to accommodate such a large population is also mass required. This not only required for the planning of the cities, but also optimization of the space. As we know, we need the space not only for the construction technology or construction of the buildings, roads, bridges, etc., but also for our food, that is agriculture. Without that, we cannot survive. Then, uh, this through this saving of the resources, how we will construct these technology? Designing and uh, construction is easier. But to construct these high-rise buildings, we need lots of material, which uh, conventionally has been the concrete and the bricks. Now, many new materials are coming up day by day. But we, I have tried to do in the line of our Honorable Prime Minister, that is clean India, such Bharat. In that area, that we, as we see quite often, there is on the roadside so much of uh, garbage is lying, and garbage may contain so many things, good and bad. So why not we convert these garbages uh, to equivalent resources? And these resources, I'll show you one by one how we can convert some of them, not all of them. So uh, this will not only convert them, but also cleanliness of the towns and cities and the utilization of waste. So this will automatically clean the environment and then the greenhouse gases also will be reduced. And most important is not only the environment, but also it will produce or it will generate employment opportunities to the people or in association with this. So I'll go to the presentation now in a regular manner. I go for the... This is, of course, just a bridge where uh, I was associated as a technical advisor. This is the uh, Naini Bridge in uh, across River Ganga, uh, Yamuna in Ilava. Then uh, planning of the mega cities, as we I have said just now, that generally space, when a, uh, as we know, equipment fails is okay. It may fail, but if the building fails, it dents the credibility of the engineers, planners, in the, and many others who are associated with this. As we know, during the earthquakes, many buildings fail. Why fail? Because so many people die. So failure can occur not only because of the uh, earthquakes others, but also because of the fault in design, material technology, etc. Uh, therefore, civil engineers have a, normally a big responsibility, that is to keep the buildings safe and to keep the buildings good looking and possibly uh, uh, suitable for the uh, in, uh, environment. Then engineers have to plan these cities in such a way that they be, be safe, healthy, and most important, sustainable, keeping migration of the people and the great amount of the waste generation in mind. With the, uh, another aspect of this, that when the oceans are rising because of the climate change, several coastal cities which are going under the water may go in the matter in the near future or another few years. So planners have to think of floating cities also building connected through waterways, etc. And just like in Italy, we have the Florence and many others. Accordingly, planners must conceive the roads, payments for future cities as they may become an interactive space for future citizens and will increasingly use to tap solar energy also because we are getting short of the energy. According to environment needs, new materials that way have to be developed or found, which is not only concrete, but also others. As you know, concrete is so, well, uh, originally it has been going on for the ages and ages. Now we have to develop some new materials. 
even the cement manufacturers have also tried to develop many materials through concrete or through cement, just like PPC and others. With the rapid growth of waste generation, as we see along the roads, there may be no space dump to it. Because once we pick up this dump uh, waste, then somewhere it has to be dumped. In fact, many times people dump it along the river or in the river, and which is a, yeah, I mean, a very undesirable things to dump along the river or along the road. Now, growing abundance of the sustainability of the climate change, alternate materials such as glass, plastic, nanomaterials, bamboo, and many others have to be explored along with the converting waste to the resources. So our uh, my presentation is on the three R principle that is reuse, reuse, or recycle. The traditional thinking of the terms of the energy saving and limited budgets available for construction. However, the present development scenario is quite different from uh, before due to many factors such as complex user needs, enhanced level of comfort, and technological advances. It is. And yet, it is possible to work within these constraints and find meaningful design solutions which are use less energy. So this way, engineers becomes more engineers and planner becomes more and more responsible not only to and design these cities but to construct and develop new materials as it is required. Then uh, I'll just go. Uh, of course, everybody you know this is only a conventional or routine slide. Waste is then generally undesirable material left over, thrown or thrown after the completion of the process. It is a substrate matter which holds the discards, intends to discard on the roads. Solid waste can be categorized in the biodegradable waste and non biodegradable waste, as we all know. And of course, segregation has to be done in this. So, the, all, both the waste or all types of waste have to be managed. There are so many other types of waste. The purpose of waste management is to reduce the effect of the waste on the environment and the rivers. Usually, Mother Nature recycles or consumes many types of waste, but not all. Just like polythene, it cannot be recycled by the nature uh, so quickly. It may take thousands of years. So, if we produce more waste than the rivers or the nature can are capable of consuming, then it has to be recycled or consumed or re, uh, reused. So this is also in terms of the land, water, and environment everywhere. You can see this is a very typical waste dump on the roadside. I may not say that uh, Bombay, etc., but many other places, this is a typical waste dump, which is seen and so ugly and also environmentally harmful. <coughs> So then we come to the waste utilization. Many sources of waste generation, such as industries, municipalities, hospitals, agriculture, etc. Some waste can be used in industry or human cycle after being processed properly. Waste such as demolition waste, light ash, plastics, etc., can be used in the construction industry, as I am coming in this presentation. However, their physical, chemical, and biological properties must be examined to find the suitability and capability of the uh, waste uh, with the materials required. So this is uh, compatibility has to, so all the properties have to be investigated. Now I'm coming to some types of the waste which are normally available uh, for construction. Other than uh, biodegradable waste, as, uh, I have not mentioned, but biodegradable waste can be converted to the manure and uh, which is agriculture waste and other waste and that manure can be used for the uh, to enrich the hungry soils in the field so that is possible but non biodegradable waste is normally lying on the road here and there some of them are demolition based or the cna based whatever we call fly ash micro silica nicotium ggbs or air cooled blast furnace like rice like Lime byproduct, glass, metal, steel, red mud, waste plastic, etc. Et there are thousands of types of the waste which are possible. So I will deal with some of them, not all of them. 
uh, waste generation, dumping in the roads, and this is already said. I have said uh, almost estimated that almost 1.5 to 2 kg of waste is generated by everybody per person, depending upon uh, the location and depending upon the city or urban or rural area and the location. So the estimated quantum of the waste will be huge. Almost, uh, I have estimated around 120 million tons of uh, waste is generated every year uh, in major cities or municipal cities. So they uh, contribute to the pollution and also generate the greenhouse gases for contributing to the global warming. Solid waste can be categorized, as I said earlier, biodegradable and modern biodegradable. Uh, typical waste sample uh, taken from the dump shown ever can be analyzed. Its distribution is shown here. Distribution can change from place to place. This is a, a we analyzed a typical waste and it is the typical distribution of different materials or different aspects in the waste the, uh, collected from the roadside. So this you can see, of course, this is not a typical, this is can change from time to time of place to place. Technologies for recovery of the useful material from the waste. Uh, technologies are so many available already. Technology for treatment of biodegradable and non biodegradable waste are quite different. These kind of technologies, lots of source material can be recovered, which can be used uh, in the uh, construction as well as replacing the natural materials. It will also keep areas, all the land and water and air, clean and conserve the resources. Some technologies are given here. Uh, many uh, first, I'll just say one slide that is biodegradable waste for the manure for the soil improvements. These are many such elements, waste like flowers. As you know, uh, the tons and tons of the flowers are being uh, offered to the river Ganga or the temples and, and many other places. And where they should go? They should be converted to the uh, manure. And we have developed the technology to convert these manures, uh, these uh, things also to manure, but of course I am not presenting those technologies here. Uh, these are biodegradable and have to be disposed. <clears throat> Large volume of the organic matter is available from municipal waste, animal and animal shelters uh, in the agriculture activities. These uh, resources can be properly composed into value-added and product called manure, which can be so, uh, superior quality of feed from the, our agriculture farms. They contain lots of NPK, as we conventionally say, that NPK is necessary for our growth of the crops. Now I come to another type, non-biodegradable waste, which is, you can see, is a typical waste dump in the uh, city on the roadside. This is completely, completely the, you renew it to house or construct house or and then uh, all the remains are thrown many times on the roadside. People don't bother to dispose of properly. So this can be, I have said, this should be utilized properly in our construction. This I will call as Malwa or CND waste. Malwa is a, in the North India common use or CND waste general all over the world. This malwa can be broken into pieces of approximately 10 or 20 mm size with the, some hammer or some pressure. And they can be sieved through the ISC 26.5 or 12.5 or 4.5 or similar sieves uh, to get the uh, aggregate of size, say 20 mm, 12 mm, uh, 10 mm, or otherwise. Finer particles which can, uh, can be used for the uh, uh, clean filling or road embankments or going back to the river bank because from where we are collecting the sand from the river bank and bring it for the customer. So this can also go back to the river banks. Of course, the biological properties must be seen before we dump it on the river. So <clears throat> after crushing the uh, malva or CND waste, this is a typical shape of the uh, aggregate which we produced ourselves. 
and this is showing the live view of the uh, that aggregate and how you can see the multiple colors of the bricks and the concrete and other materials showing in it using this such aggregate in making bricks now i have uh, tried to use uh, this based uh, aggregate in terms of the construction one of the uses the uh, aggregate making in making bricks these bricks are uh, normally you know the uh, top soil of the earth is used to uh, make these uh, red bricks or the bricks uh, earthen bricks and these are bricks uh, they consume lots of conventional uh, top soil of the earth which is otherwise good for the agriculture so these shapes of the bricks are shown here which i have developed myself this is a typical, I mean, you can say this is a malwa brick and this is how we can lay them in the form of the wall. Not only this, uh, I had also tried when working on the, in, in this uh, Allahabad bypass as a, some sort of a, a production of the embankments. On the sides, we constructed lots of embankment uh, structures and they are surviving even of today when I go and see that. Now, coming a little bit on the uh, bricks, use of the bricks are similar to burnt clay bricks, as we can see in the shape. The cost of such bricks is similar to conventional burnt clay bricks. It's not more. In fact, maybe less if we do it in a mass scale. The weight of such bricks is about 15% higher, but strength is also more. It's the uh, covers around 15 MPA, which is much higher than the conventional bricks. Because conventional bricks go only of eight or nine MP. They can be used for in the road paths, foundations, and wherever they are suitable. It can also be used in the construction of the buildings and instead of clay, burnt clay bricks. And burnt clay bricks, otherwise, it will save lots of things. In fact, HTC uh, has also developed uh, bricks similar to these by Flyesh, and which is, I know. It is a very common and very nice thing that's only with the flesh. But this I have developed with the help of the aggregate, which is this, and of course, some conventional things like cement or flyers and sand uh, along with that. The, uh, such uh, bricks, normally we have to test bricks for the three things, that is the weight, permeability, size, and others. The probability of each brick of concrete was determined. We tested a brick or cylinder made with this type of things, and the cylinder was kept under the water pressure of 7 MP uh, for about four days or 96 hours. Cylinder was broken in the load testing machine, load, and then we had broken this machine and see the probability of the cylinders. How the how the uh, water will penetrate this. In fact, this I have seen is, this is much better than the normal conventional uh, your burnt clay bricks because they consume almost 20% of the water, while as this is only consuming about 2% of water only. As you can see, this is a, a line up to which the water penetrated in the uh, cube and rest of it is all dry. So this is uh, that way much better than the uh, Burnt clay bricks. Now, <clears throat> coming to advantage of using these malwa bricks or CND bricks. Now, one of the advantages, the fertile soil, top soil of the which is for agriculture, and thus uh, the uh, and thus roadside river bricks or can be can clean. So it will also uh, less effect on the environment. Finer material after crushing, as I said, of demolition based passing through 4.75 or some other similar receipt can go back to the river banks or used as an embankment of length link. Of course, this uh, the chemical and the biological properties might be tested before we send it back to this. So we are not saying that I have tested all these properties but some of them we try to test so that they are suitable for the reverse side also. 
some uh, aggregate can also be used in making conventional concrete for structural elements. As you know, the conventionally we make M15 concrete, 15 MPa. Now 15 MPa is the lowest grade of the concrete or M10 or 15 lowest grade and such the bricks or such mulvi aggregate can be used for such type of um, arts, uh, concrete also which can be used in a low uh, strength requirements wherever it is. So this will be another important, uh, good uh, use of this uh, element. I come to the another product which is fly ash. Of course, AC is very commonly used in fly ash. We also use fly ash and, and this brick as well as used when I was working for the Allahabad bypass, the entire embankment was filled with the fly ash only so that uh, the embankment was made. But here we are presenting fly ash as a some sort of building material. Now, fly ash is a byproduct which we already know, pressure uh, coal fired power plants. It is finally divided uh, from the exhaust gases and collected. Particles are very small, smooth, and spherical in shape, and it ranges from 1 to 150 micron in diameter. They are comparatively small. Fly ash particles consist of silicon dioxide, aluminum oxide, iron oxide, etc. Can be uh, used to improve the strength of the concrete at the ages even greater than 90 days also. In fact, fly ash has become a very common uh, material. This is a typical shape of the enlarged magnification of the fly ash particles and it is being used widely and extensively by the cement industry in making the PPC cement. As uh, we know all, this is uh, now much better to manage the cement industry with the fly ash now. And because, the low, because of the low heat of hydration and many other advantages and uh, because of low heat and many other things like uh, cracking will also be minimized. Then using technological advantages of fly ash in cement concrete. This improves the probability and thus durability. So durability will be better. Improves the workability. Reduces bleeding reduces shrinkage and creep. It is increased resistance to surface attack uh, and also increased resistance to alkali uh, silica activity. It will result in the reduced heat of hydration. This lowers the expenses on the cooling of the infrastructure. As we know, if we use PPC, the cooling will be uh, easier and less expensive as compared to OPC cement. So this is one of the biggest advantage in this part. Uh, the temperature, how the concrete uh, reduces its temperature. As you can see, the control concrete temperature with the uh, OPC cement, you can see the upper curve, control concrete. And the lower curve, when you add fly ash in the concrete. Fly ash is not only used for the uh, making cement, but also it can be used to make the concrete because you can use cement and also mix uh, fly ash as one part of the ingredients just like sand aggregate and others so fly ash can also be one part of the ingredients of this of course we have to test the uh, fly ash for its carbon contents and thus so that its suitability is tested well for use in the concrete or in the cement <coughs> Uh, fly ash reaction and water. More than uh, required mixing water in the main is the main cause of the many problems in the concrete. Uh, and it's big like strength and durability. Fly ash influences the particle size distribution and particle packing to reduce the voids in the system. Fine particles of fly ash get absorbed on the opposite char oppositely charged uh, surfaces of cement particles and prevent them from the location and help help in dispersion which releases water and trap inside. 
The spherical shape of the flyers produces the inter-particle friction due to ball bearing effect. Uh, due to filler effect, the flyers reduces the void space between the cement particles, and hence the uh, concrete becomes more um, dense and much more uh, water resistant as compared to the normal concrete. This is a, a typical shape of the flocation of cement uh, particles in the flyage presence. So this is how we can see that all these things and these entered water and there we can uh, put some sort of flyage so this will be minimized in the space. And so because of the flyage presence. Other advantage of the flyage in cement uh, or PPC is that we obtain concrete mix with flyage or PPC will have the following characteristics. Optimum use of the available material, that is better. And better performance, enhanced cohesion, workability, consistency, reduced shrinkage, creep, durability, better, and service life is also of the concrete material. Reduced carbon footprints and no increase in the cost. In fact, on the other hand, the cost of the concrete reduces because of the that flyage is compared to cheap or now earlier it was free. Now, I don't know whatever uh, our houses need to be charged for it. So that way it is uh, easy better. The next item, I come to the micro silica or silica fumes. Though, <clears throat> though this uh, material, uh, which is also a waste, is not very common in our country, but many other uh, countries, it is a very common thing. That micro silica or uh, silica oxide is a byproduct obtained during the production of high purity parts in silicon and pyrosilicon alloys. Silica fume is also collected as a byproduct in the production of other silicon alloys such as ferrochrome. They are very fine metals material particles with a surface area between 0.1 to 0.2 mi uh, micron or of the order of the 20 uh, uh, millimeter square, uh, meter square per kg, which is uh, measured by neutron absorption technology. Silica fume particles are very smooth and spherical. They are almost approximately 100 times smaller than the average cement particle. So they're really very, very smooth and very small. Yeah, this is the typical form of the uh, silica fume order in the powder form. It may be available in the powder form, it is also available in the uh, slurry form. So both are possible. Normally, we use in concrete or cement, uh, cement the silica fume. Uh, this is what in the powder form. Advantages of the silica fume uh, concrete in the concrete is, I have given few because of this, it's extreme fineness, high silica content, and high silica content is highly effective as a pozzolanic material. Because pozzolanic is one thing which is advantageous in the heat of hydration or reducing the heat of hydration. Reacting with the calcium hydroxide, it will produce calcium silicate that will result in denser concrete, much denser. With this additive concrete can be designed for much higher compressive strength like M90 or even higher concrete. As we are trying uh, to produce these days the ultra high strength concrete like M150 uh, and or higher. So this uh, concrete can not be achieved by the other methods except this uh, additive. With its use the cement can also be produced as a multi blended cement. Of course, in India, I don't know if ACC may know much better that now the fashion is that we produce cement as a multi blended cement. Not only you blend uh, silica fume or the flyage or others, but you can also produce all of them put together as a multi blended cement so that it can go as high as strength as M250 or Mark. 
<clears throat> Another waste material which we are coming through is ground granulated blast furnace, TGBFS. This is also very commonly used in the industry of the concrete, cement and industry. See, GGBFS is a waste byproduct from the manufacture of pre -manage. This can be used as a component to cement clinker or produce blended cement or Portland Pozzolana cement, confirming to IS455. It can also be used as a partial replacement of OPC as a mineral admixture as per IS456 in the concrete mix. GGBFS has low heat of hydration, which slows the chemical reaction responsible for strength gain, resulting in a gradual strengthening of the concrete. It can be used in a similar manner to as fly ash or make PPC or directly in the concrete. In fact, now even GGBS is also an additive to make PPC cement and for this there is a code available already. Now this is a typical form of the uh, GGBFS, uh, which is shown here, and this can be seen, and it can be grinded further if required, depending upon the firmness required. <coughs> then I come to another uh, waste material, that is the red mint uh, from the aluminium industry. See, aluminium industry is a very big industry. Uh, in the country and all over the world. Uh, red mud is a waste material generated in the bias process in the manufacture of alumina from the bauxite. Every ton of alumina produced saves about one ton, leaves about, sorry, leaves about one ton of the solid reduced to suspension and four tons of the slurry. Depending on the raw material produced or processed, one to 2.5 tons of the red mud is generated Pattern of aluminum. So that means uh, this is such a huge waste which is available all around the aluminum industry. And earlier it was a big issue that how to or where to dispose of this volume because until as it is suitable for the agriculture, it cannot be left in the field. So uh, the suitability is also being investigated by the so that it can be used in the agriculture fields also apart from the making. This right back in the construction industry. This is a typical form of the red mud which is uh, available. Now, this red mud produces about 5 million tons of the animal, which is 6.5% of the world's generation. This is quite huge in India also. Enormous quantity of the red mud is generated all over the world. Red uh, color, which is shown here, arises from the iron oxide which comprises up to 60% of the mass. So iron oxide is also comparatively high in it. Properties of red mud. <coughs> uh, generally, fineness varies from uh, between 1000 to 3000 centimeters square per gram. pH uh, is comparatively high it makes it alkaline, 10.5 to 12.5. So this is, becomes the alkaline material uh, completely. The special gravity is uh, quite okay, 2.5. It has no cementous properties, but it reacts with water and cement. Little percentage of silica is also available in, in it, so that we can analyze while analyzing it chemically. Ragment is composed of mixture of solid and metallic oxide. Other components, other dominant components include silica, unleashed residual element, and titanium oxide. This is a composition of the uh, red mud, which is seen silicon oxide, aluminum oxide, and, and silica, uh, sorry, ferrous oxide, aluminum oxide, silica oxide, and, uh, sodium oxide, calcium oxide, and titanium. So these are the different components. As you can see, that uh, ferrous oxide, uh, I see 30 to 60 percent, which is the highest. Uh, that's why you can see a red color as is seen earlier in the picture. Then we come to the uses of this such a red, uh, red mud, how we can use. This is serious environmental threat due to 
is a tiny particle size and high alkalinity. Utilization of red mud is a great significance in view of the resources conservation and sustainability. An effective way of utilizing red mud to make bricks using red mud for the collection of the uh, bag is simple. First process is that the red mud is pressed into blocks and fired at high temperature. In the second process, red mud is mixed with the binders by using either hydraulics, hydraulic cement, or uh, other material. So this uh, also, uh, the use of the red mud is also similar to malwa bricks, which I have shown you earlier. Now, these uh, bricks can also be used uh, in the building industry if we are able to make. Of course, the construction or the making of these bricks has to be seen at the site itself because the transportation is cost is much higher. Then uses of the red mud. Addition of red mud replacing about 30% of sand exudes higher strength than concrete with the quartz aggregate for inbuilt in piles and has a better durability than standard concrete in defined condition. Addition of a slag uh, to red mud and firing improves the crushing strength of the aggregate and decreases the cindering temperature. The addition of the red mud to increase leads to modification of the property also. Of course, we have not investigated these uh, properties ourselves because this is a, a different story and uh, but it's a uh, collected data. <coughs> Now I come to another material which is very commonly available in the uh, all the streets and the world over it is being taught. See, basically polythene bag as we all know and we all must be using it every day, not only one or two, but several of them, is a, a used to, as a carry bag all over the places and may, many are thrown as a garbage after use. Because after use they are not used especially single-use plastics. Its use is increasing day by day, but as a polythene bag, this is a big nuisance. Many cities have banned its use. However, it is a very convenient method of carrying small items from the market or other places, or uh, even the packing material and others. So the consumption, in general, the uh, consumption of the polythene bags has increased from 8 million tons per annum 2010 to 15 million tons uh, per annum these days and is increasing every day more and more. Of course, this figure may be different for different cities or different places or different countries. So I'm not sure which country almost. Now, plastic bag, as I have checked, that why not we try to use this plastic bag somewhere in the construction industry? Now, this plastic bag. I have tried to use it in two ways, in a, or rather experimental, not use two ways in experimental. One is the plastic bag waste nearly 50 to 60 percent total polythene is consumed as the as a packing material or as a carry bag. Though polythene bags are the non-degradable or non-degradable item, some of them can alternately be used as a byproduct for making granules for making fresh mats, sheets or other containers, plastic furniture, power pots, etc. Another technique for its use has been investigated by us here and it is the scalp theme. Polymer concrete blocks using plastic waste coating aggregate. See, uh, there are two methods. Uh, one method I'm presenting now, the polythene waste can be used for the making blocks for perforative polymer concrete. Perforated polymer concrete is quite useful. Now, most plastic waste or polythene bags are in the form of the polymer, and properties are some of them are useful. The plastic waste can be shredded in small pieces. The aggregate, uh, this is what I, am, uh, I have done it. The aggregate of the size 10 to 12 or similar, depending on where you are using, can be heated to temperature around 130 to 150 degrees centigrade. This is a typical waste, polythene waste, which has been collected from the street side and then clean it and then put it here. So this is, uh, and this can be cut into the pieces also. 
after cutting this uh, polythene best in the pieces we heat the aggregate to a temperature around 140 or 150 degrees uh, put uh, the polythene waste uh, in the crumb uh, in the cut form and then mix it thoroughly and this mixing uh, is done so it is being shown here over this now uh, polythene concrete polymer concrete box using polymer waste as an aggregate <coughs> The shredded plastic base is poured over the hot aggregate, as you can see it here, and while constantly stirring, mixing to give it a uniform distribution of the plastic weight over the aggregate. The plastic weight gets softened easily without much evolution of the gas at such temperature. Uh, some plastic waste compost after heating. Uh, uh, to a temperature around 140 degrees and spreading over the aggregate pieces can be used in the casting perforated elements. Hot plastic waste coated aggregate can be cast in the form of the small blocks or the thin slabs, thick slabs, or in the compacted form as you can see here. This is a typical form of the uh, plastic waste aggregate which is uh, made with the form of the plastic and aggregate. You can see these are completely, uh, you cannot see that so solid. It is also quite so many voids are seen here. So these blocks are made with the plastics. And again, the coated plastic material remains uh, intact with the aggregate and has sufficient voids to give perforations. Though the binding strength of the plastic based polymer. Uh, depends on the type of plastic waste, uh, it is normally good. The experiment shows that the blend has good resistance towards water and can be used where perforations are required. However, their, their tensile strength or bending strength is very, very low. In fact, what we did was that we made these cubes, then uh, dipped in the water and see that how much water it consumes. It uh, also, uh, so that way we weigh. And then another use was that we use these, uh, uh, as we know, perforated blocks. Cities are expanding and they're getting extensive infrastructure, giving rise to use of the more non porous degradable material. See, concrete is not that highly valuable. Uh, or so, uh, perforated concrete blocks can be used on roadside or pathways so that the rainwater can penetrate through these blocks and into goes into the ground and for replacing of the groundwater. But this will be another form of concrete box, which is not normally common. But here, what we have done is that such polarized petroleum blocks made from the plastic grid are useful. Alternatively, for making such perforated blocks, cement concrete for different composition can be uh, also used, of course, as I said earlier. But uh, I'll just say these perforated blocks, uh, they can be, uh, I mean, can be extracted from the demolition base and used in the making bricks, similar to burnt clay bricks. Burnt uh, uh, plastic waste pl um, material processing can always clean the area but also generate employment. Perforated for polarized concrete uh, blocks blocks made with the rainwater harvest. This will give sustain. See, other as we know, the we have been talking of the rainwater harvesting for a long time. Roof uh, rainwater harvesting and others. Now, this method we used in on the road sites, on the path, uh, on the roads, uh, not on the main uh, pavement or on the road sites. So, side shoulders, you can see or on the driveways, or on the uh, parking areas. Now, from this, if you use this block and put it in this, then automatically lots of uh, water, rainwater will pass through this and penetrate inside the earth or inside the ground and becomes a rainwater harvesting methodology and use. Alternately, these plastics can also be used in the form of, as we know, uh, concrete roads. Roads also under the main pavement or concrete pavement 
below that also we need in the plastic so that the water and this is separated out to each other now to separate them out we use plastics or the two three polythene sheets now this can be formed in the form the polythene sheets but the strength has to be investigated properly before we really use them on under the roadside or the hard buildings so i am just now giving the uh, some conclusions from the waste processes uh, <clears throat> Now, of course, this also I have said that uh, use for the rainwater harvesting will give sustainability to the mother nature apart from the ground, river, and environment system. Uh, then we say that as plumbers, engineers are exploring for construction of future cities that would be safe, healthy, and sustainable in view of the increase in population. As you know, that uh, these days <laughs> with the COVID. Uh, and this uh, disease that many of the people or my, much population is coming back now whether they go back or not that way our cities will get more and more crowded so we need uh, to generate uh, the such type of construction so that we can accommodate this population also thus new materials of the construction will have to be found which can be altered to the addition of concrete and steel because concrete is very old and is going so uh, unless we generate lots of other materials because concrete needs lots of raw materials like aggregate the, which comes from the hills which comes from the uh, top and uh, of course cement and cement also is made from the uh, limestone and others so this has to be minimized and so is the steel so alternate materials have to be used. so finding new materials for the mega city construction material found after processing waste will not only give new materials for construction will also solve the problem of the disposal of such amount of the waste from future building because when we renovate the uh, single or two story building lots of waste is generated and constructed multi story building now from where uh, where this waste will go this also has to be seen and if we process this waste in fact one of the uh, i think uh, a recommendation will be that instead of transporting this waste to a far off places we should put up the uh, plant very close to the building or very close to the place where it is generated and then convert this waste with the help of the uh, uh, small crushers and then convert them in the aggregate and use it in the nearby building itself rather than carrying it to the far off places and bringing bringing back the aggregate for the construction so this is what i am saying that the small scale industries can be put up uh, for the, uh, processing of this waste this will also uh, because collection of the waste from the road side will also be requiring lots of manpower and this manpower from where it should come as we can see in the cities there are lots of rag pickers and these rag pickers what they do they collect the waste from the outside and then uh, collect it at some place and get little amount of the money now why not we generate in a very large scale and this waste collection and process the waste in a such a way that it does both the purpose not only to generate employment second is clean the city third is make equivalent type of the resources for the construction of future city so this is what i wanted to say uh, friends and uh, i don't know if it is okay or not but if there are any other things we have many other ways available with us but i have just summarized in a only few ways in this presentation and i'll be happy now or later on if one can see that uh, if you see this uh, i'll just say uh, this uh, on the background of this there is a banner i have put up the the background i have put a brick uh, which is uh, available i made it out of the this concrete or this dc and which can be seen when i'll just try to show you this uh, hello hello yes sir thank you yes sir thank you very much sir for presenting about waste management and uh, renewable materials and how to use them 
uh, we have our uh, regional customer service head uh, harpit sir also with us so before we go to question and answer session i would like to invite our regional customer service head uh, harpit sir harpit singh jaggi sir to say a few words regarding the topic sir uh, well good morning to all good morning uh, uh, to mr yash gupta sir uh, we are really delighted to have you on this uh, session and we are really been benefited in a very big way the way you have shared information on all the aspects which are uh, relevant to the uh, the waste uh, material utilization for allied construction purposes <clears throat> uh, the information which has been shared by you on the malwa bricks uh, and reaching over to a strength of 15 mps is something really very commendable <clears throat> and uh, moreover uh, uh, what of information you have shared on fly ash because fly ash also we have been using very extensively in manufacturing of the cements from our plants as well and this will really help our candidates to understand what vital and important role does this fly ash pl plays uh, in manufacturing of the cement and how does this uh, contribute towards you know uh, uh, giving a better strength to the cement and uh, silica fumes was uh, something which was an area of interest for all of us uh, the ground granule the blast uh, furnace slag uh, was also another constituent which we have covered which we have covered about and I, i also relate one of the product which was made from ground granulated blast furnace slag that was alco fine it was made by ambucha cements and then uh, this was also on the similar uh, uh, properties as that of silica fumes Uh, which was also uh, uh, made with an intent and with a purpose that it should contribute a higher strength to the concrete red mud was something uh, new in uh, different topic for us which is a based from the aluminium industry and uh, uh, something which was really new for us to understand and learn was the application of the waste polythene bags in manufacturing of the blocks uh, i would just request you to kindly share if you can uh, 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 can share some more information on that what is the strength of these uh, uh, polythene plastic uh, aggregate blocks and uh, can these be used in the masonry work or can this be plastered with the cement mortar uh, if we want to use somewhere uh, uh, would request you to throw some more light on this well uh, thanks for your information uh, i have not tried to use these thing because one of the my objective was but uh, there are lots of um, vehicle parking lots and other things where lots of water rain water gets collected and how this rain water uh, should be seeped through the ground inside the ground so that ground water harvesting as we have been seeing that lots of times we bother about where is the water ground water is reducing now this method if you use it for the ground water harvesting or rain water harvesting is better of course i have not tried to use it in the construction of the building as i indeed uh, indicated that its a strength comparatively is comparatively very low the compressive or the uh, bending flexural strength is also low so that we cannot rely from that angle but compressive strength uh, can be to some extent used for the low uh, bearing uh, walls because otherwise uh, it cannot be used in the bus but alternately the malwa bricks of course is much better to use in such way and uh, malwa bricks have to be regenerated in fact acc is uh, doing fly ash bricks as i was seeing one of the, your presentations earlier that uh, i was thinking why not you try this also in your factory and if i can be of any 0.1% assistance i will be happy to help the industry or come and visit you or discuss with you or say few words with you so but this is not being used by me in any but malwa has been seen on the roadside amenities and many other places i have tried myself thank you correct thank you thank you very much sir uh, i i leave this uh, session open to all other participants as well if they want to come up with any of their queries or any of their concerns or questions which they can Uh, you know, come forward with. I mean, if you have, you want to have some kind of a clarity. Yeah, Nitin. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, there are some questions uh, which have come in uh, section of question and answer. Uh, YP, sir, I am reading reading it out. And uh, first question 
कैम फ्रॉम मिस्टर श्रवण कुमार सर गवर्नमेंट इंजीनियर्स स्ट्रक्चर इंजीनियर्स पीडब्ल्यू डी आर रिकमेंडिंग ओनली ओपीसी सीमेंट इन दियर प्रोजेक्ट वाई एंड सर वाई वी गेव टू ऑल लिटरेचर वी गेव टू ऑल लिटरेचर अबाउट पीपीसी सीमेंट देन ऑल्सो दे डू नॉट एग्री विद अस एंड कंपनी विल प्रोवाइड द ओपीसी सीमेंट वाई it is about office cement uh, that uh, some uh, government uh, departments are not recommending office cement so why it is so sir can you explain yes sir uh, well uh, see when i worked for the lahabad bypass uh, concrete payment code which is uh, also uh, one of the biggest uh, almost 80 kilometers long bypass biggest bypass of the country now there also we were uh, recommended of uh, the nh recommended the opc cement but uh, as a material consultant i wrote several times that once the ppc cement is better then why not we use ppc rather than opc now this a decision had to be taken at the administrative level rather than at the technical of course i don't know whether they could proceed further in fact not only that i presented a full time like this slide show that what is opc what is ppc what are jgbs and then uh, shown them the advantages of the opc cement over the uh, sorry ppc cement over the opc cement and they uh, in fact in the uh, up bridge corporation also they appreciated this that uh, yes i it is a, uh, much better but we have to take a administrative decision to allow ppc in the construction and also we uh, i wrote to the uh, bis that similar to opc we have grade 33 43 53 and so why not in ppc also we have similar grades made out so that it is also showing the strength that okay this ppc will be better in the and will be equivalent in the strength to opc as well so this have to be done of course now i am no more uh, associated with them but uh, if you want some data for it i can give but uh, it has to be persuaded by the construction agencies or the nhi or others to persuade the government to make the ppc as a common construction material thank you thank you sir uh, next question is from uh, vinod dube Uh, his question is what is the recipe of west brick recipe of west bricks west, west brick yeah. west. that is that is the malba bricks okay okay yeah. thank you sorry the no, normally it is uh, the uh, just like making the concrete see concrete is made with the help of the cement aggregate sand and clay ash so we have also uh, made all these materials made into it and mixed it as a small mixture uh, of course uh, since our uh, work was not on a high scale is a uh, uh, roadside mixture we mixed it all the four materials and then see normally around 150 uh, kg of the cement was used for the per cubic meter of the uh, uh, concrete so uh, around 150 200 uh, this way and uh, of course the sand and the uh, some of the sand which was also uh, obtained after sieving the uh, malwa also was tried to use so that we can see the effect of course the very fine particles had to be sieved out again before we use it in this and we tested it for the water absorption and others can only use so i don't try exactly remember how much but uh, just like uh, month 3 uh, 5 or something like that it may be something similar to that of course it is a little old uh, investigation which i when i carried out but uh, now uh, of course in the, my papers maybe i will I'll let you know if somebody is interested thank you sir does it does it arrive uh, in equal competitive as regard to the price of the red brick as well well uh, red brick uh, that is say uh, you mean uh, clay bricks one clay bricks yes sir yes sir yeah it is in fact uh, much i don't know whether i wrote it in the inclusions or not it is uh, definitely compatible not only compatible if you produce it at a large scale it will be cheaper in the sense if malwa if you say at the present it is free 
of course, it is similar, some things like uh, the flyage earlier was free, so it was cheap. Uh, but presently, Malva is free, so it is cheap. But if it, it becomes, you make it more and more common, maybe somebody will start charging money for it. But at present, its cost is almost equal to red clay bricks. Almost equal. It may be 10% higher or lower around that. Yeah. I have calculated both. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Next question is from uh, Mr. Nirmal Tiwari. Uh, he is asking, green concrete having same strength as compared to freshly made concrete. What about the durability of green concrete? Green concrete, uh, I mean, green concrete will be with the, uh, made with the, this, I mean, environment friendly um, materials, isn't it? That's what I think he means that, that green concrete, uh, whether he mix the fly ash the, uh, or aggregates other things other than the OPC. So we, uh, of course, it has to be much more uh, strength because compressive strength of green concrete has to be better than the earlier conventional concrete. Green concrete is made because of the non-conventional materials like fly ash, uh, the malva, or, no, sorry, other things then only it can be. So it is better to have a green concrete. In fact, these days we are talking of the concrete, variety of concretes. I've tried to, in my book, I have described different types of concrete. That is whether a green concrete, bacterial concrete, and all these concrete, malva concrete, many types, almost 15 types of the concrete has been described in this book. If ACC wants, I can request a publisher to send you one copy of it. So it also describes all the types of the concrete in it, of course, in a short form. So anyway, green concrete will be environmentally, in my, my opinion, it will be better than the conventional concrete. Thank you. Okay, sir. Thank you. Next question is from Shavan Kumar. Dear sir, are the high volume fly ash concretes better or at least as good as common concrete? Well, I will not be able to answer clearly this uh, question because high volume fly ash is a, another material in which we make large amount of the fly ash to be used in the concrete. Now, uh, this is equivalent to uh, making uh, the concrete similar to green concrete, I would say, because uh, fly ash is a material which is also very common and has certain little amount of pozzolanic material. And this pozzolanic material gives the strength also, along with the concrete. So this high volume fly ash, I don't think it is uh, much higher in strength in that, or may not be so much uh, in this strength. But I will not be able to comment what strength it has, or how it will compare with the conventional concrete. Sorry for that. Yes, sir, thank you. Next question is from Mr. Amit. Uh, his question is, S topic depicts a lot and in continuous section, my question is that developing country like India, what is the scope of low costing houses and how much work going on it on it from agencies and researchers? Well, researchers are trying to do their best, like I am so trying to do my best, but at the same time, how the government is proposing, they are just like ACC is proposing to use the fly ash bricks and the cost of the construction is automatically low. Now, if the brick cost is low, construction cost is also low. As I said, even these, uh, because fly, uh, malva concrete bricks, if it is uh, uh, used for low cost buildings, then naturally we don't have to go to that high strength of the 15 MPA. We can uh, work with the uh, seven or eight MPA itself. Because it's a normally one or two story building. But high strength is needed only for the fire. So automatically this is being used and government is trying to make so many houses, even in the rural areas, urban areas, even ACC is doing and the government of India is doing for all these people as per the scheme of the government of India that provide house to each and every poor or each and every hutment person living. So, of course, I will not be able to give, give you more detail, but uh, that data is available in the, of course, the uh, agencies. 
thank you sir uh, next question is from dinesh goswami where can i use plastic waste aggregate plastic waste aggregate i mean uh, plastic waste made with the aggregate that is what uh, i said that you use in the driveways you use in the roadside uh, payments or you say uh, parking lot and others where the waste water or the sorry rain water has to be uh, penetrated through it in the uh, ground and uh, otherwise as i said earlier we have not used this for the construction of the building or the walls and others that is uh, was not my uh, but the use of it in the parking lots and uh, road sites is also very important otherwise you cannot uh, dispose of this and disposing of the plastic waste is possible only if you use it for rainwater harvesting and especially in the time when the water sources or groundwater is going low and low and low the rainwater harvesting is of importance and its relevance in the present day times thank you thank you sir next question is from soil ahmed which type of plastics used in this technology well uh, it will not be a single use plastic single use plastic will not be having any strength it has to be the other type of the plastic uh, which is normally common uh, in the area because many of the earlier uh, carry bags in fact i was when i was in the iraq way back in the 70s then uh, um, it was not common in india these plastic bags when i went there we were using these plastic bags and when the market when i used to go there bring the items and they used to give a give me one plastic bag and that was one place where i started using these things. and when later on when i uh, gave this to one of the industrialists here they started making all these waste all these uh, plastics this was very little but plastic bags can use only in the driveways and others at present as of my present investigation maybe it can be investigated further you can have another mixture in it apart from the plastic aggregate and some other mixture and then make it suitable so but it is a further research required we can do that research but at present we are not uh, doing that research if somebody says that yes you do we can try it. do a further composition of these materials along with the plastic thank you sir in the past uh, we have seen somewhere in the news that these uh, uh, plastic with aggregates have been used as a substitute material for construction of the asphalt roads and there was one of the project which was undertaken in bangalore as well so uh, you have any information on that like how uh, good will it relate in the way that it can be used for the uh, bitumen substitute construction uh, of course it is it's just like uh, a polymerized bitumen I mean, if you mix this uh, in a hot bitumen, it makes it polymerized bitumen, and polymerized bitumen is uh, can be used in the roads, uh, similar to the bitumen, whichever grade of the bitumen uh, it is. So it is also a common thing, or not common, but it can also be used along with the hot bitumen. Put the plastic, melt it, and see it is a polymerized bitumen, and properties are. quite similar to polymerization itself so it can be used in the roads or in the roof top or wherever it is possible i don't have the data of the bangalore right but uh, it can be used in the as a polymerized bitumen in the roads right right thank you sir next question is for uh, sir from uh, mr vinod dubey sir what precaution should be taken during concreting and post concreting also to avoid cracks and produce durable concrete it's a very common provision in the sense that uh, cracks of course as we have been saying for the ages they come uh, because of the heat of hydration and this heat of hydration is, is a common thing for the opc cement if we use on the other hand ppc cement then automatically these cracks are minimized the heat of hydration is less and then once the cracks are minimized then automatically it can be done. but the only thing is that once the construction is over then automatically you have to put some sort of uh, material 
or when it just like uh, uh, putting a sheet or something which uh, does not allow exposure to hot weather oh if it is not allowed hot then automatically the heat will be dissipate in itself and then will not crack until less otherwise it is exposed so the heat has to be exposed uh, dissipated inside it and then only cracking can be controlled but i don't know uh, why not use the epc in fact acc should take a lead and that convince government convince people convince bis to see that ppc cement is more commonly used in this thing, so that and they are also can rise in the form of grades on the basis of the strength so i will not be able to say much but this is what i feel that should be used altered materials like this thank you thank you sir uh, next question is from uh, mr aditya he has two questions first question is what is red mud can you please explain sir and uh, second question is which type of cement permeable permeability is better opc or ppc obviously ppc no um, no question because ppc permeability is much less as i showed in the slide that the uh, ppc or the fly ash the particles are so smooth and so small and then each particle penetrates inside the cement particle the size of the uh, uh, fly ash particles is almost one fourth or one fifth of the uh, cement particle so it uh, penetrates inside the cement particles and then it makes the, all the voids all the uh, things becomes impervious comparatively of course not from the silica fume type so this is ppc is much better what was the other question and the other question was sir uh, what is red mud can you please explain red mud red mud uh, of course uh, red mud is a waste material from the aluminium industry and aluminium industry uh, we are also producing lots of aluminium in the country as i showed uh, the aluminium waste available uh, produced in our country is almost 2.5 to 3% of the total and so much of waste is done now we are also as a agriculture in fact my in, in the our ngo we are also doing lots of investigations for the other things like red mud uh, the uh, fly ash how it can be used in the form of uh, agriculture because whether agriculture if you use it whether it will be used profitably or not fly ash we have already tried and then see that fly ash can be used uh, effectively for the agriculture for main places we have to dump we have to dump why not put it in the agriculture field so this is also we have investigated how it could and it is quite suitable but uh, other things i cannot say that it can be used but fly ash definitely can be aluminia or red mud i am not able to say much because we have not investigated red mud in detail it is all the data presented is all from the literature which is available all over thank you thank you sir uh, next question is from mr rahul gupta cost of one malwa brick what is the cost of one malwa brick and how can we produ produce it on site cost of malwa one malwa brick is on of course uh, the time change time to time the cost of one malwa brick is also around 5 to 6 rupees at that time and uh, so uh, it was comparatively equivalent to the uh, burnt clay brick and uh, once one clay brick as i said the malwa at that time i kept it free but if we have to pay for it malwa then cost may differ so it is almost equivalent to but from the advantage point of view it is much better as i said the strength is almost uh, two times of the because one clay bricks has only 6 to 7 mp or even less while as this uh, can reach up to 15 mp which is much better and can be used for the foundations or the high loads or the roads and other places also uh, it will be better thank you sir uh, all questions are uh, well yeah, i think i think there was there was quite lot of information uh, which has been shared by <coughs> uh, professor yash gupta uh, we are really honored to have mr gupta to be our uh, guest speaker to share the information on all aspects sir. and we are really thankful to you sir uh, uh, i on behalf of um, uh, the team acc 
extend my gratitude and uh, all sincere thanks uh, for having uh, been given the, your valuable time to the session, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, any more questions if uh, any participants have, then they can type. Or otherwise, we are about to finish this webinar. So it seems all uh, queries are well resolved. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for your uh, valuable time. Thank you, sir.